Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up your Linux machine to be able to use Jack with Pulse. That way you can make music using Linux while you can talk to your friends on Discord or watch YouTube videos. This is something that not many videos teach because people who want to focus on Linux music multimedia production tend to download a distro that is already configured for that, such as Ubuntu Studio, KX Studio, or what other distro make that makes music, I guess. Anyways, so in order to set this up, you're going to have to download a few things. In Ubuntu, you're going to have to install Candence Audio, Pulse Audio Module Jack, and Jack Tools. Now in Arch, you're going to need to install the same things, but it will be in Yaourt. So just do Yaourt, Candence, Pulse, whatever these are. And you should be able to get the same. And once you have these installed, you're probably going to get something that looks like this. Candence. This should be checkmarked as yes. If it's not, you're going to have to go to etcsecuritylimits.conf with either getit or nano or vim, whoever you use to add your text, and add these lines. And if you're not in the user group, or you just saw permissions like that, you're going to have to add your user to it. So you're going to have to do sudo user mod dash a dash capital G audio and whatever your username is. But basically you're going to have to do that and then once you log out and log back in you should be in the audio group and then that's when you can start using Jack. So with Jack you're going to want to have to start it up. I already have mine started. I'm using it at the moment. And then you're going to want to go into the configure. In engine, you want the properties to be set to real time so that Jack does not close when you close all your programs that use Jack. That way you can still have it on as long as your computer is on and I'll have to worry about it closing itself. You want the clock source to come from the system itself. That's for the metronome and some jack oriented software that require specific timing. And these are on default, so just leave it like that. In a driver, however, you want to select ALSA because ALSA is the default audio system in all Linux distros. The device slash interface, I don't focus on this. I use upon duplex mode because what this is, it's if you have a sound card that is external connected to your computer and you want your audio inputs and outputs to focus on that sound card, you turn off duplex mode. You make it focus solely on the interface. But if you're like me with only one or two sound cards, the second one being provided from your GPU, then you're just going to have it duplex mode on and then you would have a predefined input and output. The output being my analog connection to my headphones and the input being my USB microphone which if it doesn't show up in this just put an HW microphone and it'll look for it by default in ALSA. Sample rate leave it at 44,100 or 48,000, depending on how high quality. It, it's very confusing to explain that. Just choose either two. Most popular one is 44,100. Buffer size, that's how many frames per period between the process calls. Now, this is something that is based entirely on your CPU. If you have a lower buffer size, you get less latency 
in the audio, which is good for having MIDI keyboards or launch pads that require you to be on time with the metronome. But if it's too low, your audio will start to distort because your CPU is not fast enough to catch up with the audio being played back in real time. So you have to put a high enough buffer size that it won't distort the audio. So I leave my at 1024 because the latency is not that big of a deal and the latency is only 23.2 milliseconds. That's fine. Period slash buffer. You can either set that to 2 or 3. I would recommend leaving that to you. Unless you want a specific low latency playback. MIDI driver. I set to none because we have bridges, which I'm going to show in a moment. And that's all you really need to know in this section. There's nothing in the network, so we're going to ignore that. Jack bridges. Elsa Audio, make sure that jack bridge is on and connected. I have it set so it goes through Elsa, through Pulse, through Jack. That way I can use my Pulse applications at the same time as my Jack applications. Also MIDI, this is so I can use my MIDI devices like my Keystation Piano or Launchpad or whatever that requires a MIDI connection. And we have Pulse Audio. Make sure this bridge is on all the time or else you can't hear anything that is in Pulse. So that's all you need to configure in Candence. But while we still have time, I'm going to go over some of the tools and tweaks. Cadia is how you route the audio in your system. So this is OBS taking in the input from my mic, which is my capture, and that's my Keystation 49 piano. And then over here on the right is my system playback. These four modules are pulse jack bridges or syncs or, and sources. I have two just because I live stream and need two separate ones for some games I play. But these are just connections. You connect to other things like this. You drag it to another connection and then connect it. But you have to make sure those are inputs versus outputs. Claudia, it's the same thing as Cadia, but it's more focused on session. I don't ever touch that. Meter, meter out. Uh, these are kind of broken in a way on Arch. I don't know how it is on Ubuntu, but you're supposed to measure the system inputs and outputs. The output works for me, but not the input, and I do not know why. Logs tells you what Jack's doing. So if you have a problem with Jack, you could just read through this and find out what's wrong. This renders a Jack project so that you don't have to have the software open. But keep in mind, when you render with Jack, any Jack project, it takes your audio hostage until it's done. XY controller, something with your MIDI piano. Sorry, MIDI keyboard. And here we have tweaks. You don't have to touch any of this stuff unless you're installing them on different paths. This is just default applications. And well, Wine and Azio. That's if you want to use something that requires Wine, such as FL Studio. And you want Azio to be connected to the Jack. That's the main part of these tweaks. I never really use these because I don't have FL Studio or any Windows uh, digital audio workstation. And that's all you need to know about your system and how you use Candence to manage Jack. If it works, you're probably watching this video and hearing the audio. If it doesn't work, you have no clue and you're just watching this video without hearing the guy talking. But anyways, that's pretty much all you need to do in order to get Jack and Pulse to coexist on the same machine without killing each other. So the next episode is going to be about our door.